have uh, <coughs> the last uh, section of uh, chapter one, one point six. Uh, this chapter, uh, this section, uh, we talk about the inverse functions. Okay, so as the word inverse may suggest to you, is that you know we're going to reverse something. Okay, we, it did some operation, and we're going to reverse. It. Just like you know, you play a uh, video and then you uh, un undo it you see like walking and then when you do it you walk back you see so that's what inverse function is like uh, uh, a function takes you basically what we're going to talk about is this a function takes you from A to B function F takes you from A to B then the inverse of this function takes you from B to A. So if F is the function, I'm going to say F to the minus 1, which is the symbol, uh, means the inverse of that, takes B to A. Okay, That's basically what we're going to discuss. But this uh, so-called inverse function may not always exist for a particular given function. So, what we're going to do first is to talk about this one specific type of function uh, uh, and then talk about the inverse function. It turns out that not every function has an inverse, okay? Only certain kind of functions have inverse, inverses. I'm going to use the word now and explain what it is. Only one-to-one -one functions will have inverse functions. If a function is not one-to-one, -one, whatever that means, then that function doesn't have an inverse. So, in order to get the, to the inverse function then, we're going to uh, talk about one-to-one uh, -one function. What is the one-to-one -one function? So, first of all, if you want to talk about the one-to-one -one function, so you better start with the function. So, if, the, if what you have is not a function and then it doesn't make any sense to talk about being a one-to-one -one function. So we talk about f of x, y equal to f of x to be a function and uh, we call it one-to-one -one. and I'm going to use the notation, short notation, one dash one. So from now on when I write one dash one I mean one-to-one. -one. It's a lot easier to say 1 dash 1 than writing the whole thing no, 1 to 1 okay. so so we say a function f of x y equal to f of x is 1 to 1 if and only if uh, different inputs values of x in the domain have different outputs well what do I mean by all that as you recall, in a function, let me just draw a picture here. Remember, we had a function. Let me just draw a function here. Something you know, simple that we can understand. Let's say I have this function. Let, for the sake of definition, I just choose five elements here. Maybe I choose a few more here. Okay. And then a function f, let's say, is defined to have assign x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 to x1 to y1, x2 to y2, maybe x3 to y2 again. This is allowed. You see, these two x's are different, but their y's are the same. And then uh, maybe uh, y, x, uh, this is y3, and uh, x4 goes to y4 and x5 goes to maybe uh, y5 like that okay so in this case as you can see two different x's can have the same y this is allowed for a function okay so in fact i want to make it a little bit let me just uh, erase this line here is 
also goes to x4 like that. Okay. Uh, so as you can see, for a function, this is allowed. But to having two different input x values, having the same y values. Okay. But what we are talking about here, a function is one to one if we do not allow this. In other words. If x's are different, then their y's must be different. So this situation cannot happen. Two or more x values cannot have the same y value. So we're going to have something like uh, the following. You see, if I have this is set x and this is set y, let's say. And uh, for the sake of discussion, let me just choose uh, five here and one, two, three, four, five. So if I call this one x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, then y1, y2, y3, y4, and y5, then uh, a function g, let's say, is 1 to 1, if, if I do it like this, x1 goes to y1, x2 to go to y2, x3 to y3, x4 to y4, x5 to y5. Like a basketball game, you know, five on five. You cannot have four in one team and then five in the other team, okay? So everybody covers, every person covers one person. So in this case, if you compare these two, the difference is, both of them are functions, of course, but the difference is that in this situation, for g, if you choose any of these two x values which are different, then their y values are different, okay? When this happens, the function is one to one. So x1 not equal to x2, also f of x1 not equal to f of x2 either. So, so basically, this is for any two x values. So if I choose any of these x values which are different, their y values are different. So this graph here, this diagram represents a one-to-one -one function, a one-to-one -one function. This is not one-to-one, -one. it's actually two-to-one, see? So let's look at the definition one more time, you see? The definition says a function f of x is called one-to-one -one if and only if uh, different input values x in the domain have uh, out the different output values in the range. In notation, that means if x1 and x2 are different, not equal, then their function values f of x1 and f of x2 also are different. Of course, we could have said this a little bit differently. They call it contrapositive. Therefore, if uh, the x, if the y values are the same, then the x values must be the same, you see? Then that's it. But like here, if you wanna make, if you wanna make this function to one to one, you see, these two have the same y, uh, the same y value. So in order to make it one to one, these two x's must be the same. Then. If I make these two x's to be the same x value, then it becomes one to one. So that's a contrapositive. So if you wanna show a function is one to one in the future, you have to show that, uh, uh, in general, if you choose any two x values which are not equal, then the function implies that the function values are also not equal, okay? So for, again, now if I go to the diagram, it's easy to see it if we have a function defined by a diagram or a table or set of order pairs, okay? Because everything is right there, you can see. Uh, the only time we may have a little bit difficulty to show something is uh, uh, not one-to-one -one or is one-to-one -one is when the function is given by algebraic equations and we have to do a little bit of calculations or as I will show you later on, maybe I can, uh, maybe you can use the graph to show a function is one-to-one. -one. Uh, actually, we're going to discuss that. We can, we can use the graph of a function to show if the function is one-to-one. But let's look at some examples here, you see, now I have this diagram, of course let me make it a little bit bigger so you can see, 
this diagram here this one is one to one if I call it F F is one to one if I call this one G G yeah, is also oh, this is not one to one I'm sorry not one to one because these two different X values they have the same Y value okay, so this is not one to one but this G is one to one is okay okay so this one is one to one so let me get to that one I see it a little bit so this one is one to one how about this diagram does does this one represent a one to one function but think about it well as I said for, for something to be a one-to-one -one function first it has to be a function so if it's not a function then it's not gonna uh, make sense to say whether it's one-to-one -one or not so this is not a function to begin with okay not a function so here here is a story there if you want to show uh, a relationship is a one-to-one -one function and first you show it's a function and then after you show it's a function, then you uh, show it's one to one by showing that different x values represents different y values. Okay, so uh, let's look at this example here. This function f of x equal to three x negative three x plus four. Is this one to one? This is a linear function. Okay. f of x equal to negative 3x plus 4 is a linear function and uh, we're going to show that all the linear functions are one to one actually so show uh, to show if is one to one start by as I said start by choosing two x values which are not different so I say let x1 not equal to x2 okay whatever they are in general because x1 is not equal to x2 what I'm gonna do I'm gonna walk uh, back and then uh, create something negative 3x plus 4 at least of x have x1 and x2 so what I would do I multiply both sides of these two both sides of this inequality by 3 so this tells me that if I multiply both sides by 3 3x1 is not equal to 3x2 either okay then you have a minus you see you have a minus there so I can multiply both sides by a minus so that means if I multiply both sides by a negative one so negative 3x1 is not equal to negative 3x2 either okay then uh, so I created this two, negative 3x then I have to add 4 to both sides so do with z add 4 to both sides so you get negative 3x1 plus 4 is not equal to negative 3x2 plus 4 either okay but as you notice maybe make it a little bit bigger here so you can see you see left side what is the left side of this guy left side it is the right side okay left side is negative 3x1 plus 4 which looks like this negative 3x plus 4 instead of x you have x1 so left side is really nothing but f of x1 you see that's what it is because f of x is negative 3x plus 4 therefore if I replace x by x1 that would be f of x1 
So if this is not equal to then negative 3x2 plus 4 is the same thing as this one here but instead of x we have x2 so the left right side is f of x2 so look what happened here I started with this I started with x1 not equal to x2 and then I ended up I ended up f of x1 not equal to f, f of x2 either, you see, that's what I did. I started with x1 not equal to x2, I ended up with not f of x1 not equal to f of x2, and that's exactly what the definition here demanded for one-to-one -one function. If x1 is not equal to x2, then f of x1 not equal to f of x2 either. So I just showed that, uh, so, uh, so, this one, so it's uh, so uh, so f of x equal to 3x plus 4 is 1 to 1. Okay, so this function is 1 to 1. So if you want to show something is 1 to 1 uh, without graphing. This is how you have to do it. You have to start with two input values different and then show that the output values are different as well. But if you want to show that something is not one-to-one, -one, you see, then you have to find one particular example that show that function is not one-to-one, -one, okay? For example, if uh, for this example here, which is f of x equal to x squared plus 4, he says, is this one to one? Why or why not? I say, this is not one to one, period. And to show that, so here is an example. Let x1 to be 1 and x2 to be minus 1 you see so I chose two different input and I'm going to show that their y values are different so uh, x1 equal to 1 implies f of 1 equal to f of 1 I have to put 1 in there you see so it's going to be 1 squared plus 1, I get 2. x2 equal to minus 1, then f of minus 1 is equal to minus 1 squared plus 1, because minus 1, all of it is squared, this minus becomes positive, so you get 2 again. So as you can see, uh, x1 and x2 are different, but they have the same y value. So that means one and negative one both go to two. You see by this function. One and negative one, these are the input. These two input have the same output of two. So this is not one to one, it's two to one. Here I chose x1 and x2 to be 1 and negative 1. You can do the same thing by choosing 2 and negative 2 if you want. You can choose 3 and negative 2. Actually, because of this square, just choose any two numbers which have the same absolute value but opposite sign will do the job. But you don't need very many. You just need one example. And that was the simplest one. I can choose 2 and minus 2. If I choose 2 and minus 2, then the function values becomes 5 and 5. So 2 and minus 2, if I do that, 2 and minus 2 both go to 5, actually, you see? But I don't need 2, I just need 1 to show that it doesn't work. So this is not 1 to 1, you see? Not 1 to 1. Then uh, we have set up ordered pairs. 
set of ordered pairs is easy also to see whether it is one to one or not. First, check to see if it is a function, and then see if it's one to one. To show, so uh, is this a one to one function? First uh, question is this: this is a function for sure because. Uh, this no x values or no first number is repeated. So no x value like 2 have two different y values. 3 doesn't have two different y values. Negative 1 doesn't have two y values. Neither does 4 or 0 or negative 2. So this is definitely a function. Fine. Now is it 1 to 1? To have 1 to 1, different x's should have different y so if different x's have the same y then it is not one to one so you see in other words check to see if the second number repeated so I, a question is any of the second numbers repeated question make it bigger a little bit here because if any of these second numbers are repeated, that means the same uh, 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 two different x values will have the same y value, would there be one, two, one? You see, one is not repeated, you see, zero is not repeated, five is not repeated as a second number, okay? Uh, seven is not repeated, two as the second number is not repeated, three as the second number is not repeated. So. Uh, no second number repeated therefore this function is one to one okay however if we look at the second one you see the second example clearly it is a function clearly g is a function because the first numbers are not repeated. It's 3, 2, 0, 7, 1. But if you look at uh, this pair, let me look at this pair and this pair. You see, you have 2 and 1 as the first number, but the second numbers are the same. So in other words, I have 2 and 1. This is 2 and 1 as the first number. Then. Uh, these are the x values are different but both of them have the same y values of one you see so this is not but not one to one just because of that one uh, single okay so okay as I uh, said before there is an easier way to determine whether a function is one to one, and that is by looking at the graph of the function. Okay, so let me just show you one example here. What I mean, if you have a function whose graph looks like this, let's say I have a graph that is x y, y plane, x and y, and let's say I have a uh, function that looks like, let's say this okay this is a function because it passes the vertical line test but definitely a function a function question is it one to one if I draw a horizontal line you see if I draw a horizontal line here anywhere somewhere or somewhere here you see like that then I get two intersection points and these two intersection points have the same y value zero you see the same y value but their x values are different the x for this one let's say is x2 then x value for this one is x1 clearly x1 not equal to x2 as you can see they are not the same they are different points but the same but they have the same y value 
of y0 in other words I have x1 y0 for this point you see x1 y0 and this point is x2 y0 so as you can see two different x's have the same y value and that's not one to one if the x's are different their y's must be different but the y is the same so this function so not one to one so what did I learn from this example what I learned is this if you have a graph and you want to show whether you want to determine whether it is one to one or not look at some horizontal line to see if any horizontal line intersect the graph as more than one point like here yes this horizontal line did I have another horizontal line maybe I can use this horizontal line or this one or many many just one is enough if you can find one horizontal line that crosses the graph at more than one point that means that function is not one to one okay but if you have a graph that looks like this you see this case if I draw any horizontal line you see if I draw any horizontal line you always get one intersection you see so no horizontal line crosses more than one point so this is one to one this is not one to one okay. so this is what we call the vertical line test okay so that's very easy convenient actually to use graph to be to determine whether the function is one to one rather than proving by algebraic uh, computation. So let's read this. Uh, a function is one to one if and only if every horizontal line that intersects the graph of the function, it will intersect it at one point only. This means that no two different x values in the domain have the same y values in the range. So that's make it one to one. So based on this uh, test, let's see which one of these graphs down, given down here are one-to-one. -one. Well, this is not one-to-one. -one. Because if I draw this horizontal line, you see, I get one, two, three. In fact, if I draw another one like here, see, if I draw one here, I get more than three. I get one, two, three, four, five. This is definitely not one to one. This one is one to one because if I draw any horizontal line, you see, you always get one intersection point. And this horizontal line here, this particular one, never intersects the graph, it goes to infinity. This is what we call an asymptote, and uh, we will study them later on. Okay? So these asymptotes never intersect the graph, at inf they do it at infinity. Okay? So, so no horizontal line intersect at more than one point, so this is one to one. Okay. This one clearly one to one because if you draw any horizontal line, so this is one to one, okay. This is one to one, okay. And this is not one to one because if I draw but this but if I draw horizontal line I get one intersection point. This is one to one. But no, this fails the vertical line test. So, not a function at all. So this one is not even a function, much less than being a one-to-one -one function. Okay. So first, it has to be a function first before it's one-to-one. -one. Now, if you want to use this technique for the following. Like if you want to show which one of these graphs, these functions are one to one, simply uh, graph them on your graphing calculator and uh, just visually you can tell whether they pass the horizontal line test or not. So I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger and they graph each one of them separately. I wish I could. Let's see if this one. Go to 
y equal to let's do this one here so negative 3x plus 7 negative 3x plus 7 this is my window my window is okay so let's see but actually I don't see it very well so I go zoom 6 to get there we go this is better
now we worked really hard to get to where we're going to be here. You see, talk about inverse function. So, why did we, why did we talk about one-to-one uh, -one functions? Okay. Well, let's just uh, talk about what we mean by inverse functions, and then you're going to see the relevance of one-to-oneness in this definition. Uh, so, if you have a function. Basically, you want to reverse the order, the reverse the rule, you see. So, what we have here is something like this. Here's a new piece of paper. Let's say I have a function like, I have this function here. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a different shape, you see, like this. And put a square here, okay? Because you're gonna see why. Let's say I have a function. Let's for the sake of definition, let me just put five elements here, and put let's say put three right here, okay? So this is yours. Uh, so in from uh, from now on, let me see if we can discuss it on this section here. Uh, Instead of x, y, from now on, I call this one set x, I call this one set y. But uh, it's even more uh, it's more useful to instead of x because this is the domain, all the x value, and this is the range, all value. So instead of x and y, I'm going to call this one d, the domain, and call this one r, the range, from now on. Okay? That's even better. It's the same x, y, but D means that uh, you know, I'm talking about just the domain values and range means the range values because there is no other things in in there that I'm concerned with. Okay, so so uh, let's say I have x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5, and I have y1, y2, and y3. Let's say this function is defined as following: x1 goes to y1 x2 and x3 goes to y2 and x4 and x5 goes to y3 this is definitely a function definitely a function okay, so this is f now what we're gonna do we're gonna reverse the order we're gonna go back you know we're gonna go this way we're gonna uh, and I use a blue. You see, I want to go this way. Okay, let's call this one uh, G. Okay, so what does that mean? Means that uh, now these are the. So I have to reverse the arrows. You see, I have to reverse the arrows like this. the arrows. So now for G, this becomes a domain and uh, this becomes a range. You see? And uh, these are the input and these are the output. Therefore, this input X, I mean this input Y1 by G has output X1 and this input Y2 has outputs x2 and x3 and input y3 has these two inputs so g is not a function simply because the, these two inputs have different outputs okay so as you can see the reverse operation may not be a function because uh, the original function was not one to one but if I start with a one-to-one -one function and do the same thing, you see, let's say I have one, two, three, four here, and one, two, three, four. This is x1, x2, x3, x4, and y1, y2, y3, y4. And then this function, let's call it f again. Here we go, f. Uh, let's 
say f takes x1 to y1, x2 to y2, x3 to y3, x4 to y4. Clearly, a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so this is one-to-one. -one. This one was not one-to-one. -one. Now, if you reverse the order, call it G again. You see, then you have arrows going the other direction. And as you can see now, these Y's are the input. And these, uh, so of course, that's the domain of F. This is the range of F. Now, this becomes domain of G, and this becomes a range, you see. So as you can see now, G assigns x1 to y1, x2 to y2, x2 to y2, and so forth. So as you can see for G, these inputs, every input has a unique output. So G is a function. So in this case, the reverse operation is a function here. The reverse operation is not a function. Then we say that if the reason for that is because your function f is 1 to 1. So if a function is 1 to 1, the reverse operation is a function. In this case, we don't call it a reverse operation. We call it an inverse function. So, so the, the reverse, the reverse, operation is a function. Here, the reverse operation is not a function. Then, we kind of make our life easy. We say, since the reverse operation is a function in this case, we'll call it We'll call it the inverse function. So inverse function is a reverse operation of a one-to-one -one function. So this one doesn't have an inverse. Then, you see, if the function is not one-to-one, -one, doesn't have inverse. But this one has inverse. Then what we do then? Uh, Nicely, if uh, it, if the function is one to one and has inverse, I want to do a little bit of work with it to make it look nicer. Always, first of all, we always want our input to be on the left side, go from left to right, okay? And always we want x to represent the input and y represent the output. So what I would do here, after we have this picture, x1 to y1, x2 to y2, and x4 to y4, and then we reverse the operation, and uh, you see, like this, we reverse the operation. Then I pick this up, just like, you know, uh, a pancake, you see, like with a spatula, pick it up, and then flip it over. So if I flip it over, I get the following. So this square one goes to the left like this. And then this oval goes to the right. That's the same thing, I just flipped it over. And then these four elements becomes these. Okay? And now G that goes from uh, uh, this square one to the oval one, G is going to be this one here, you see. G, and these are Y's, and these are X's. So this is, this is Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, and these are X1, X2, X3, and X4. And then clearly now, Y1 goes to X1 like this, y2 goes to x2, y3 goes to x3, y4 goes to x4, okay? Now the y's are the input, x's are the output. I want to do one more change here, because in general when you uh, graph functions, you want to have horizontal axis to be x and what vertical axis to be y. So every time you use x, y plane, uh, 
your input is always x, your output is always y. It's just a name. So when I get here, when I flip these things over to put to be able to put it on x y plane, I change all these y's to x and these x's to y. What difference does it make? Yes. So I'm going to get rid of these y's and call this one x1, x2, x3, x4, and get rid of these y's. You see, change these y's to x and then change these x's to y y1, y2, y3, y4 now I have a genuine function g okay so this g is the inverse of f and I don't use letter g anymore instead of g I use f to the negative 1 so this symbol here f to the negative 1 means now you have it is the inverse of this function okay so let me just summarize this thing one more time and then go to the notes and give some more examples uh, we start with a one-to-one -one function okay so this is your domain of function f and this is the range of function f and this is one to one then to get the inverse of that we reverse the arrows or reverse the operations okay so go from right to left and then we pick up the picture flip it over it becomes this and we change x to y y to x then what we get is a new function that I call it f inverse of that okay so so if the function is not one to one then it doesn't have an inverse you see so this function doesn't have a one to one so if you want to find the inverse of a function first uh, determine whether it is one to one and then go after its inverse so let's see what we have in the notes. Let me, let me just read it. Okay. Uh, let f, let y equal to f of x be a one-to-one -one function. The inverse of f of x, see I start with a one-to-one -one function because I want to make sure the inverse is defined because if, if it's not one-to-one -one, the inverse does not exist. Uh, the inverse of f of x which we denote by f to the minus one of y because now your y's are the input you see as I said this is before I change them to x you see but this is f to the minus one of y is equal to x you see if y is equal to f of x then x is equal to f to the minus one of y okay some of the homework that's what you have to do in some of the homework so uh, but at the end, I change x to y, y to x, just for this purpose of graphing. So, so the inverse of this function f of x is uh, another function f to the minus 1 of y is obtained by reversing the rule of the function. This means f of f to the minus 1 of y is the inverse rule to f of x. Okay, so like here, you see, this is this is a very simple picture. I use this, an oval shape for the domain of f and range and a, a polygon for the range of f just to see what's going on. And I start with a one-to-one -one function. And then to get f inverse, you see, you just reverse the arrows. So this is the f inverse. Y's are the input, x's are the output. Okay. And then uh, let's see what happens. Note that for, uh, for the inverse function f to the minus 1 of y, y represents the input and x is the output. You see, y's are the input, x is the output. Uh, so, we simply change x to y, y to x, and write y equal to f minus 1 of x. It doesn't make any difference, it's just name calling. When you change the name of a, a variable, it doesn't change the nature of it. So as I said, what you do, pick this uh, whole picture up, flip it over like this so this uh, polygon goes to the left and the oval shape goes to the right okay and then uh, then change these y's to x this x is missing here x1 so change these y's to x and this x is to y so this is your final product of f inverse so as you can see now this uh, polygon that used to be the range of function f now is the domain of f inverse 
and this oval shape that used to be the domain of function f now is the range of the inverse function. Okay, so how you find that is how you find the uh, uh, inverse of a function. So let's finish reading this and then go to more examples. Uh, so let me do it one more time. Note that uh, for the inverse function f to the minus one, y represents the input and x represents the output. So we simply interchange x and y to write y equal to f to the minus one of x so that x would represent the input again and y the corresponding output. This also, the reason for that is that this enables us to use the usual xy plane to graph both the function f and its inverse because we can do them on the same coordinate axis. Because if I want to use on the same coordinate axis, x must represent the input for both of them. That's why I changed x to y, y to x. Furthermore, f of x and f to the minus 1 of x exchange domain and range. You see, this oval shape here was the domain of f. Now is the range of f inverse. This uh, polygon was the range of f. Now is the domain of f inverse. So, uh, summarizing this is this, this remark. So the condition that f must be one-to-one -one is essential. Otherwise, the reverse operation uh, that we denoted by this f to the mi minus one will not be become a function. So, only one-to-one -one functions have inverse, period, okay? So, if, you, if you, they give you a function and they ask you, uh, find the uh, inverse, the first thing you do, go check to see if it's one-to-one. -one. If it's not one-to-one, -one, then say, hey, no inverse, sorry. Okay? Then, what if it's one-to-one? -one? Then we have to go ahead and find it. And here are these instructions to find the inverse of a function. Okay? The first thing you do is to... Uh, well, let me stop this for a second. Sorry about that. Now we're going to find the inverse of a function. Uh, first of all, if the function is given by a diagram, this is how you find the domain. This is how you find the inverse. Okay. Reverse the arrows, flip the picture, change x to y, y to x. That would be your inverse. Okay. Of course, first we have to determine whether it's one to one. Then if the function is a set of order pairs, or table, all you do is to switch uh, the first number and second number for every pair. For example, if you have something like uh, uh, 3 and 7, if one of your pairs is like that, to get the inverse function, write 7 and 3, you see? Because now, uh, if for f, this is the input, this is the output. For the inverse function, this is the input, this is the output. It changed. It changed. Okay? And that's it. You do it for every pair. Like, you know, you have mini pancake. You just boom, 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 boom. Uh, uh, leave, uh, flip each one of them. Now, the question is this. How do, I find the dom uh, how do I find the inverse if the function is given by an algebraic equation? That is, is also easy. The first thing you do, you write y equal to f of x. Then you solve this equation for x in terms of y because if you solve it for x in terms of y then you have x all by itself on one side and everything else in terms of y on the other side so that means now y is the output in, uh, y is the y is the input and x is the output and then to get it back to normal uh, x y plane you change x to y y to x so the, this is a typo here this is interchange x and y sorry this is and that will do the job. So let me, uh, let's look at some examples. Like this one here. Let me make it bigger so I can see better. Uh, find the inverse of each one, each function. Well, the first thing I have to show, show if it's a do, yeah, if it's one to one. Well, it's a function for, for, uh, for, for one thing. 2, 3, negative 1, 4, and 
and negative two, these are the first number, neither one of them is repeated. One, zero, five, seven, and two are the second number, they are not repeated. So, so this is a one-to-one -one function. So, F inverse is equal to 2, 1 becomes 1, 2, 3, 0 becomes 0, 3, negative 1, 5 becomes 5, negative 1, 4, 7 becomes 7, 4, and negative 2, 2 becomes 2, and negative 2. There you go. That's it. That's it. That's the inverse of this one. Uh, the second one, uh, this is not a one-to-one -one function. You see, this negative two is repeated. Negative two repeated. So, no inverse. No inverse function. Okay, that was easy. Uh, this one, uh, this is an algebraic equation. So I write y equal to 2x minus 1, and then I solve this one for x in terms of y. So I replace this, uh, I add 1 to both sides, I get y plus 1 equal to 2x, then I divide by 2, I get x equal to y plus 1 over 2. So I solve for y, x in terms of y, so you see, your y is the input, x is the output, but I have to, if I want to graph this, I have to graph it on the usual xy plane where x is the input on horizontal axis. So I change x to y, y to x, so I just go ahead and say y equal to x plus 1 over 2, and this is the inverse function. Okay. Uh, this one. To graph this, so first of all, I, here I should have said one to one by graphing. By graphing, this is a one to one function. I say y equal to square root of 2x minus 1. Then to get y, to get x, I have to square both sides. So you go ahead and square both sides like this. So I trust that everybody learned this in the previous intermediate algebra course. So you get y squared equal to 2x minus 1. Then you add one to both sides, you get y squared plus one equal to two x, then divide by two, you get x equal to y squared plus one over two, that's your inverse function, but you have to change y to x and x to y, and this is your inverse function. graph this, this by graphing, this is not one to one. So it does 
does not have an inverse. That was easy. See, if I graph it, maybe I should. Actually, here we go, you see. If I graph. If I graph this one here, you see, how do I graph this one? Let me make this one a little bit bigger so you can see. You see, if you want to graph this one, you have a condition. You have to put this condition in your calculator. So type like this. So say y1 equal to parentheses x squared minus 4, then parentheses x bigger than or equal to 0. You see, this is how you graph it in your graphing calculator. So let's just do that. So, so I say uh, y1 equal to parentheses x to power 2 minus 4. says x bigger, bigger than or equal to. Remember, to get bigger than or equal to, you have to go to test. Second math. So I say second math. You get second math, then I have bigger than or equal to is number four. Bigger than or equal to zero. Then if I say graph, see how it looks like. See, you get one piece of this uh, this whole thing. So this is one to one. See, one to one function. See, one to one by graph. So it has an inverse. To find the inverse, so it has an inverse. So I write y equal to x squared minus 4. Then I add 4 to both sides. I get y plus 4 equal to x squared. Then I take the square root, so let me rewrite it here, let me rewrite it. x squared equal to y plus 4, like that. Then take the square root of both sides. So if I take the square root of both sides like this, then I get x, x equal to plus and minus square root of y plus 4. You see, plus or minus. So the question is this. I have plus and minus. I cannot have both of them. I gotta have one of them, either plus or minus. Which one do I choose? You see, this is x, and here the condition that I had given to me is that x is bigger than zero. So that means x has to be positive, and this is x, it cannot be negative. So I choose positive, you see. Need this. So x is equal to plus y plus 4. Need because since x is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay. Then, now that I have my x, then change x to y, y to x, and this is the inverse function.
for your homework problems. You see, some homework problem says that if uh, let y equal to f of x be a one-to-one -one function. If 3 is equal to f of 5, then 5 is equal to f inverse of what? You see? You see? If, if the output for 3 is 5 for f, then output for 5 for f inverse is 3. So 5 is equal to f inverse of 3. You see? Another one, another question. If if inverse of negative three is equal to seven, then what is uh, f of seven? The answer is f of seven is three. See, that's what we had. We had, you see. We said if y is equal to f of x, then x is equal to f inverse of y. Before we change x to y and y to x, of course. See? So on your homework problems, there are a couple problems like this, pretty straightforward. I mean, it won't take more than five seconds to do it if you know what you're doing. And this is how you do it. Okay? So remember that. All right, let's, let's do... Uh, one more example here. I'm not going to do this example here, really. It's one-to-one, -one and it uh, involves a little bit of operation. So let's, let us not do this. <laughs> Makes life easier for everyone of you, okay? So <laughs> uh, one more thing is the next theorem this theorem. Let me explain what it says. You see, if you have f going this way, so this is x going to y by f, and then see by f, and then y going to x by f inverse. So that means that if I start with uh, f of x is equal to y this way, and then if I apply f inverse to f, so f of y is equal to x, then if I replace this y, you see, if I replace this y by f of x, after all, y is f of x. What does that mean? So that means uh, this f inverse, I'm sorry. So f inverse of y is x, so that means if I replace this f, this y by f of x, that means f inverse of f of x is equal to x. You see? So basically it says that if you go from x to y by f and then f inverse takes you back to x. That's what it means. So in notation, in composition notation, means f, f inverse circle, f at x is equal to x. Now if I start with, uh, with f inverse, you see, f inverse of y is equal to x. And then f of x, is equal to y. So if I go ahead and replace this x, if I replace this x by all of that, so f of x, but x is f inverse of y, so I get y. So that means if I start with y, by f inverse I go to x, and then f takes me back to y. But after we change x to y, y to x, I can uh, always, you know, 
uh, write everything in terms of x. You see, so that turns out to have it turns out to have turn out to have this uh, this theorem. So that means that if you have a function one to one, and f is the inverse of it, so if you composite f inverse and the function f uh, at point x, you get x back. If you composite f with f inverse and x, you get x back. Okay. So let me do these two examples and uh, finish the section. So this, so I want. So this is a nice way to see whether two given functions are inverse of each other. You see, I have two functions. I don't know whether this is inverse of this or not. So how do I check that? I look at the composition. So I look at f circle g at x. We've done this before. Composition. Remember, this is simply f of g of x then f of g of x means f of g is one half x squared plus three so that means in f in this function I have to replace all these x's by all of this one half x squared plus three but this becomes square root of two times x but x is all of that one half x squared plus 3 and then minus 6 so let's simplify this 2 times 1 half is 1 so you get x squared 2 times 3 you get 6 and you have a minus 6 these two cancel out you get the square root of x squared which is x you see so I got that one if composition with g gave me x so I got, did half of it now I have to do the other one. I have to do G circle F at X. So that means G of F of X and uh, this means G of F of X is the square root of 2X minus 6. So that means in G one half x squared plus three. I have to replace all of this x by square root of two x minus six. And then of course I have a one half then the square root to power two they kill each other so you get two x minus six plus three if you distribute this one half, one half times two is one, so you get x. One half times six, you get negative three. Plus three, these two cancel out, you get x back. Okay. So yes. So I say yes. F and G are inverse. It says of. other one one more <coughs> look at F circle G at X this is F of G of X <coughs> and uh, this is the same thing as f of g of x is one third x minus three. So that means in x, which is three times x plus nine, replace this x by one third x minus three. So if you do that, then you get three times one third is one, so you get x. Three times three, you get negative nine. And plus 9, these two cancel out, you get x. So I got this part. Now let's do the other way around. Let's call, let's do g circle f. And x is g of f of x. But f of x is 3x plus 9. 
that means in G, which is one third x minus three, replace this x by three x plus nine. So if you multiply one third times three, you get one, so you get x. One third, third times nine, you get three. And you have a minus three, these two cancel out, you get x. So say yes then, f and g are inverses of each other. Uh, I want to do this last page, but unfortunately I did it once, but the video turned out not to have any sound, so I have to do it, but I don't have uh, new copies to, bl new blank copies, so I have to work with what I, I have already written on, so if you, are, uh, f if you have a function and you have its equation, then it's really easy to find the inverse of it. However, if you don't have the equation, but they give you the graph, the question is how to find the inverse. The answer is given to us by this theorem. This theorem says that if you have a graph of a function f, its graph of a function f and the graph of the f inverse are symmetric with respect to the identity function line y equal to x which is a bisector of the uh, first and third quadrant. So this is what we have. So let me just explain what I have. As I said, I'm not going to do another one. Let's, let's work with the one I have here. You see, suppose you ignore all these red things, just let's concentrate on this black one. So let's I have, say I have this xy plane. This is x and this is y. And I have this function f of x, the graph, black graph, right here, this is f of x. It's a one-to-one -one function, okay? So it definitely does have inverse. The question is, how do I get the graph of the inverse? The idea is to, like, the answer is given by this theorem says, find the mirror image of your graph with respect to uh, this line y equal to x. So what I would do, I draw line y equal to x like this. This is line y equal to x. Then uh, I fold my paper along this line like this. Fold it. You see, I'm folding. And then uh, in order to get the impression, I went over this with pencil. Then I folded this one and then I started pushing really hard with my nail on this graph, like this. When I opened it up, I got an impression of this graph on this other side. Then I uh, filled it in with this red, okay? So as you can see, this red and the graph black, they are mirror image of one another, symmetric. Symmetric with respect to that line. Okay. This theorem says that this red one is the inverse of the black one. That's, that's what it says. But that's how you find the inverse. Okay. So to find the inverse of a function given by a graph, find the, the mirror image of that graph with respect to line y equal to x. Okay. If you are a uh, if you are an artist, you know how to draw things, you can do a good job right here. Okay. But the key to it is to actually fold your paper like this, and get the impression, and then draw. Okay. So this is f of x, this is f inverse. That's very nice and symmetric. For, for things to look symmetric, you, might, you must have the same scales on x and, x and y axis. Like I said here, if you have, like one is this big, on x-axis and one is this big on y-axis, then 
your picture is going to be distorted a little bit. It's not going to look symmetric. Okay, so, so there is nothing wrong with the theorem. So you have to adjust your window in such a way that the length of the ones on both x and y turn out to be the same, so things would look symmetric. Then uh, the idea was to find the, the the mirror image of this function right here, the inverse of this function. So again, as I said, uh, right here, when you find the mirror image, see, if y is equal to f of x, s, x is equal to f inverse of y. For example, if 2, 5 is on the graph, then uh, uh, if on the graph of f of x, then if you switch these two, 5, 2 is on the graph of f inverse of x. Okay? So I can use that idea as well and this theorem to get the graph of something like this. So what you do is this. You say, okay, this point here is 5, 6. You see, this point is 5, 6. If I can find my pen, pen. This is, this is 5, 6. This is 4, 5, and 6. And then uh, it goes to 6, 5. 6, 5 is right here. So this point becomes this point. This point is uh, this point is one four, then it becomes four one. This point is zero one, becomes one zero. This point is on the graph, won't go anywhere. So then what you do, you say, okay, the graph of the inverse is to connect these two, connect these two, so it looks like this, and then there are something like this curvy. Depends how good, of a, good of an artist you are, then you get the graph of this function. Okay, so, so this is the graph of f inverse of x, and uh, uh, this one, uh, as I, I I erase all the units because I didn't want to have uh, units on x y plane, so I want my picture to look symmetric, and I ignore all these divisions. I wish I had one with none, but it's too late. So I graph this one on my graphing calculator. If you graph this on your graphing calculator, you get something like this. Because the domain of it, you see, the domain of this function, you put 2x minus 1 bigger than 0. Make it bigger a little bit. See, you say 2x minus 1 bigger than or equal to 0, then you add 1 to both sides, you get 2x bigger than 1, then you divide by 2 get x bigger than one half. So that means domain of this function is one half to infinity. So this is the domain. See? And then if you graph this function, do I have it? Maybe not because I have the other function. Yeah. If you graph this on your graphing calculator, you get this graph right here. And then I draw line y equal to x. This is line y equal to x. Then if I go ahead and fold my paper along this line here, you see, then the graph of the inverse is one half here becomes one half there. And then from this point draw, I just copy this one going upward. So if this is a graph of f of x, this is the graph of the inverse function. Very nice, nicely symmetric, you see. And uh, this function here, I already have it on graphing calculator. I graphed it, you see, because it has a condition. I had to put the condition there, and then I graphed it. This is what I got for it. And this green one, this green graph, is actually is a graph of x squared minus 4 with x bigger than 0. And then I draw the line y equal to x, this red line. This point is negative 4. Then this negative 4 on x, y axis becomes negative 4 on x axis, like this. And then this point, whatever this point is, becomes this point. So you drop a line perpendicular, you get to that point. And then you kind of, you know, draw the same line, and graph from this point, symmetric. So that's the graph of the inverse. So. 
this concludes uh, section 1.66 and uh, the whole six, the whole chapter in general. I hope you get to your homework assignments and I hope you watch these videos as many times as you need to to actually understand all these topics. Get to your homework and uh, the homework are all similar to these problems. You should not have any problem to do it. And then for the test, I will uh, post some uh, practice problems from uh, old tests so you can practice. So good luck. Try your best, see what, what you can.